Okay, let's apply our chord function theory to a piece of music. If we write a piece of music in the key of A minor, remember that A minor is relative minor to C major, so they both have no sharps or flats. That means that your A minor scale is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then A again, right? And your C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. No sharps and flats, and since they share that key signature of no sharps and flats, then they're called relative major and minor, okay? But if I were in the key of A minor, my one chord would be A minor, right? Not A major, A minor, because A, C, E. And my five chord would be E major or E, or E7, because we learned this last video, the five chord raises that seventh note up and gives you a major triad or a dominant seven. So the G sharp that is artificially put into this scale for these chords right here pushes us back to there. G sharp will push to A, okay? And if I'm in C major, then my one chord is C and then my five is G major or G dominant seven as well because that B from the G chord is gonna push us back. All right, let's take a look at sway. So. This is the piece that we're working on this term. You've been doing a lot of syncopated strumming, and that's really good. I want to talk about the chords in here. Notice that there are no sharps and flats at the beginning. So this tells us we're in the key of C major, or we're in the key of A minor. And since we have A minor chords at the beginning, and E7, which is our 5-7 chord, right there, our 5 chord with the 7th on it, and you go to the end of the piece, and it's E7, that looks like our V chord and brings us back to an A minor chord right there. It seems like this is a minor piece of music and we knew that because we've already overviewed it. So look at this, the whole verse is just we vamp or start on the one chord. And then we start to sing on the one chord, A minor. When marimba rhythm, when we change chords, it goes to a five chord with the seventh on it, dominant, right? Starts to play, dance with me, and that takes us back to the one chord. Make me sway like a lazy ocean. Go back to the five chord, hugs the shore, hold me close. Back to the one chord for the end of the phrase. Sway me more. It's all one A minor and five chords, E dominant seven. And you see at the beginning and at the end, I've got my one chords and they're always approached into by the five seven. It repeats again for the second verse, jumps to here. And then what happens for the bridge or the middle part? Well, we see a G seven chord here. Now remember that five chords are dominant seventh chords. And that means that they just have the letter and the number. So this is a dominant chord right here, right? This is a five chord. This is not the five chord for the key of A minor. The five chord for the key of A minor is E7 and pulls us back there. E7, A minor. G7 says to our ears, you're going in a new direction. You're gonna change key, temporarily at least. And so when we get to the bridge and go, other dancers may be on the floor. In our ears, even if we don't intellectually understand that, that chord is saying, don't go back to A. That's not home anymore. I'm the new five chord and we're gonna go to where my one is. And what's G7 the five of? G is the five of C. So we're now temporarily in the key of C. Be on the floor, dear, but my eyes will. Look where we go. C. C only you, only you have that. So this whole bridge part right here is in the key of C, right? Our ears hear that because the five chord job is to push us there. This is not the five chord for the key of A minor. It's the five chord for C. But look what happens when we get to the end of the bridge. All of a sudden, the A minor key reasserts its dominance and says, no, 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 that was nice. Go back, get, go sit down over there. We're gonna take over. And the E7 comes in and see that G sharp? That's that added note that they modified the scale with to make it a major triad, E, G sharp, B, right? 
And that G sharp points us to the A, which is the key we're going to. So when we get to here and it goes, only you have that, and we're surprised. Magic technique. It's a chord not in the key of C, it's got a G sharp in it. It's the five of A. It's saying we are gonna go back to A minor. And so, magic technique. When we sway, I go one chord. Weak. Again, for this bridge, did you notice that we started the bridge with a five chord when we actually arrived here, right? And at the end of halfway through the first phrase, basically, we end on a one chord, albeit it's a different key. And then it says, okay, let's reassert the old key, five of the old key, A minor, and then it arrives at the end of the phrase on the one. This piece is textbook is using five chords and one chords to make your ears hear what key you're in, but also to frame the beginnings and ends of phrases so they're nice and stable, right? And then this last verse is just like the first verse again. So one chord at the beginning. I can hear the sound of violins long before. Back to the one chord. It begins. Make me thrill is only you know how. Five chords sway me smooth. One chord, sway me now. How do you write your own songs? Well, sometimes music just comes to you, but but what you're doing is you're, you're tapping into models that you know that work, and one chords and five chords is the place to start. Actually, if we were gonna write a song, we might just erase all these notes and keep the chords and then write our own new thing in there, and we, we can take a whole bunch of other technology because these one and five chords frame this up perfectly, okay? Before we leave this, let's go take a look at a couple other pieces. So, uh, well, let's just look at maybe Falling in Love, okay? So, Falling in Love, um, this is the chord part right here. Uh, no sharps or flats, so we're in the key of C or the key of A minor because these are the same thing. But if you look at the end of the piece, we go G7, and C, five, seven, and one on the key of C. Now I know that there's an A minor triad really up close and, and personal at the beginning, but if you look at how this actually sounds, G7 and A minor, that doesn't sound like home. That sounds like we went four, five, psych, it's the sad version of one, it's the six chord. We actually have a specific job for this six chords, um, trick you. They're called deceptive progressions or deceptive chords. You go from five and you think you're going to one, G7 should go to C, but then it says, ha ha, fooled you didn't, right? Six chord, okay? So that's what happens at the beginning. Four, five, psych, six, and then they say, just kidding, here we go. Four, one, five, one, right? So, that's what's going on there again. Now it didn't start right on the one of the five chord because it's kind of a lead in, but you can see that it lands on the five and one at the end there. Let's take a look at just what's going on in the verse here. Let's see. So from the beginning, okay. Uh, wise men, we're down here now. Say, so we went one, three, six. It's just those in-between chords that give it a flavor, right? And then it goes, only fools rush in. That's the halfway point. And notice that we started this song on the one chord. And when we got to the middle, basically the end of the first phrase, we're on a five chord, framing it up, keeping it stable, right? And then it says, for I, but I can't help. That's a psych. You're supposed to think it's going to be a one chord, but it's not. Falling in love with you. One, five, one. Framing it up at the end there. Yeah? Cool. I want to show you one other part here so you can understand what's going on. When we get to the bridge of the song, uh, that's right here on our lead sheet right? It goes to the E minor. Like a river flows surely to the sea. 
Darling, so it goes. Some things are meant to be. So take, and I played from here to there. Let's just see what's going on for a minute. We've had our verses and they're all in the key of C and they do some beautiful things with, you know, the ones and the fives and the threes and the sixes to give us a nice flavor. It's beautiful lyrics and melody. We get to the bridge and we say, let's do something different. So just like in Sway where it went somewhere else, this does the same. Now last time Sway went from the minor to the relative major and then back. This is gonna do something similar. It doesn't go from major to the relative minor, but it does go to the three chord. And the three chord is E minor, and if you think about the scale E minor, it's got one sharp, that's F sharp, so let me destroy this for you. Okay. In the key of E minor, your one chord is E minor, and your five chord, right, is gonna be B, or B7. These chords do not exist in the key of C where we're in because they've got F sharps and D sharps in them. Look what happens for the bridge here. It says, we're gonna do something different now. E minor, B7, one, five, one, five, one, five, one. And then at the end of the bridge, it says, just kidding, that was nice, let's go home. It's kind of like saying, I live in Wenatchee and I'm doing all my things in Wenatchee and it's fun, but I'm bored. And I heard that in Quincy, the Dairy Queen is really good. So for a trip in the middle of your week or day, you take a, a sort of trip to E minor. And you go down to Quincy, we'll call E minor the Quincy chord. It's got its one chord and its five chord, and it's all telling you I'm in the key of E minor briefly, but then at the end it says, now it's time to go back to C, which we'll call Wenatchee area, right? And so we put our five chord on there. So one chord. E minor, like a, reinforce that so it doesn't just feel like a three chord. River flows, when you hear that B7, it says, I'm a five chord, we're really in the key of E minor. And then it just repeats that again and again. Surely to the sea, just doing these and then again. Darling, so it goes, get to hear, some things are meant to, we're leaving the bridge, we, Say we're going back to the key of C, and how do we do that? We signal that with the five chord, which pushes us there. B, so take my, etc. okay? When you look at a piece of music, look at the edges of the phrases and look for the dominant seven chord. It's your five chord and tells you what your one chord is. It's your five chord and tells you what your one chord is. And your your ears are already hearing this. You just uh, you just didn't know it till now. All right, onward to another video.